Welcome back to Elden Ring. We are going to head to the east into the land of Scarlet Rot, but there's just two short things I want to do before that. Um, on the other playthrough, I discovered a couple of new things. One was a dungeon, which is going to be super easy for us to get there at this point. It's between the Church of Pilgrimage and this minor Erd tree. There's actually a cave right here. Found on the other playthrough by seeing the statue. Doing that, and it points over there. Tombs Ward Catacombs. I think we'll, we'll be able to just steamroll everything. Feels good to use this stone sword key. Nomadic Warrior's Cookbook 9. What does that actually allow me to make? I didn't look at it in the other playthrough. Rancor Pot. And what does that do? Uses FB throw to spawn vengeful spirits. Oh! Takes human bone shards. Those are pretty rare. And grave violets. Oh, I want to try that. Actually reminds me, there's, there's a lot of stuff I haven't tried. Didn't we have some, like, poison spray thing that uses the formic acid rocks? We have a beast lore? Lore's beasts only. Uses blood and hefty beast bones. God, that sounds cool too. Probably usable on the bears? Oh yeah, this is the thing I was thinking of. Acid spray mist. Release acid mist from the mouth. But it takes an altus bloom, which I don't have. It says it blooms on the altus plateau, which I've never been to. It also takes Miranda Powder and Formic Rocks, both of which are not that common, especially Miranda Powder. You have to get it by, I think only by killing those huge flowers. So I'm assuming this is a pretty good item if it takes such rare things. I am going to throw Vengeful Spirits at the next skeleton. Ooh! That did a lot of damage. Yeah, it's just one of those shades again. Which I now know Magic Glint Blade, Glint Blade is the way to go. Bye bye. <laughs> we get a special one, Lutel the Headless. Spirit of a headless knight who leads the mausoleum soldiers, wields a lance enrobed in death and hurls spectral lances at foes. Lutel sacrificed her life so that in death she could continue to protect a soulless demigod until their revival, earning her the hero's honor of Erdtree burial. Yeah, so remember the walking mausoleums and how they have those like spectral knights around them that don't have heads? This is the spirit of one of those. One more thing before we continue to the east, another thing I missed is this Tower of Return. So I did find the tower in this playthrough before, but... This chest at the very top of the tower actually teleports you somewhere. It's a trap. So I either just dodged out of the trap and then forgot about it. Or maybe I just never went up here in the first place or saw the chest. I'm not sure. But anyway, let's see where it takes us. I know where it takes us, but I want to show you where it takes us because it's somewhere very interesting. Far, far to the north. Lindell, Royal Capital. Let's take a look at the map now. <laughs> Look at that. Wow, it's not that far off of the places I've found. In the other playthrough, it was even more dramatic because it was so far away from anything we had discovered on the map. This is still quite out there, though. Yeah, there's no way to go back down here. There's a huge lift. It's at the bottom, and we can't use this. But you can explore just a little bit up here. And there's one enemy to defeat and one talisman to get. It's not a talisman that I'm going to use, but I do want it. I have an idea. I think I have a talisman that increases charge attacks. Yeah, enhances charge attacks. Let's put that on. Because I'm going to need to break this thing's poise. Yeah. 
Yes! Oh no, I need to be on the other side? Whew. Almost missed that. Oh, Poor guy isn't even getting a chance. Ow. I decided to get fancy. <laughs> there we go. Bye. But yeah, there's a sending gate over here. Which is inactive for some reason. I don't know if it becomes active later or what. And then there's a chest over here with the talisman. Blessed Dew Talisman. Actually, it's faster just to go to equipment. Talisman depicting a drop of the Earth Tree sap, a blessed boon, gradually restores HP. It was once thought that the blessed sap of the Earth Tree would drift from its boughs forever, but that age of plenty swiftly came to a close, and with time, the Earth Tree became more an object of faith. Yeah, so I believe this restores my health by two hit points every second. It's significantly less than even my Flask of Wonders physic gives me. It's It really is quite slow. So I don't think it's worth using. Let's go back to the turtle. I do love how this game uses traps. And... And also the four belfries to give you previews of distant lands that you might be hours, maybe dozens of hours away from ever reaching. I think that's really cool. All right. Time to head to the Scarlet Rot lands of General Radon. Looks like there's a cave right here. Oh, I gotta go around to get that, though. There's a giant down there. Have I... Have I been down there? I don't think I have been. In, like, this area. Doesn't really look like there is anything here. Spirit Spring. Oh, hey! There's a cave! Glad I checked. Gale Tunnel. Smithing Stone Level 4, nice. Behold Friend. Doesn't open from the side. Can I just not go in this way? Is there a secret wall or something? How did you all die? Some enemy attacked them. Oh, they tried to get to the side of Grace in time, but they didn't quite get it. Maybe this... Oh yeah, rear Gale Tunnel entrance. Gale Tunnel. Back up here, we'll go to that cave in a second, but I want to check out these runes first.
Oh my god. The music, the color, everything changed. The vibe out here is... Whoa. Wait, what's happening? Am I being invaded? I didn't get off. Not of my own accord. Invaded by Anastasia, Tarnished Eater. Well, I don't think I'm going to be a very tasty snack. Sacred Scorpion Charm. Raises Holy Attack, but lowers Damage Negation. Talisman carried by assassins who strike unseen. Patterned on a scorpion freshly shed of its exoskeleton, its claws seizing a heart with a blessed glow. Hmm, well, I don't use Holy Damage. Man, this whole place just has such horrible vibes. It's creepy. Can I notice anything new to make? Anything obvious? Beast lure is not new. I don't know if I was able to make soap before. I can't remember. Nothing jumps out at me. We're really not that far from it, are we? We're actually, like, really not. Isn't it an amazing thought in such a wonderful part of this huge open world that this massive earth tree is something that is kind of like a guiding light, kind of like an ultimate goal almost to get to it. And it's just over everything. And I mean, I've played for like 50 plus hours and I haven't even reached it yet, but I just love that it's always there in the background and knowing that in the future at some point I will get there. Eh, we're getting a little too far off track. Let's go over to the cave. What? Is this... Was that put there by General Radon? Are they trying to block the access? Trying to block the road? Fortify it? Kaled. Like, why else would this wall be here? Oh, look at all the bones up against it. Of others that tried to get over it, I guess. Well, there's a side of grace. Let's... Wait a minute. <laughs> Hold on. Damn, that's a nasty looking crow. Kind of love it, though. Are you an enemy? Or can I talk to you? You almost look like I could talk to you. No, you're an enemy. Unfortunately. It's got a hell of a beak. Try fire. No dog ahead. That's where nascent butterflies come from, this land. It's rotting. Everything. Rotting scarlet. The very earth that Caelid rests upon, and Celia, town of sorcery. The end is nigh for us all.
Shack of the Rotting. That one shack has its own specific name? Just the one shack with the one dude? Oh, these are horse staples, I think. Oh, there's a lot more rotting. I'll leave them to their rotting. We gotta go read this message. If only I had a ladder. <laughs> Sniping spot? Yes. Precious item ahead, but don't you dare. Old codger ahead, therefore likely champion. Oh, look at that castle over there. That is that. Actually, wait, is it? Yeah, I think it is. Ooh, that's a lot of bloodstains. Be wary of left. Is that how you all died? <laughs> the other one didn't even notice.
feel a little overpowered here. Hey, baby. Try ranged battle. I can do that. Here, and then beating to a pulp. Is that a special one? Like, I don't normally see them like that. I refuse to touch the babies. Oh, cross Naginata. Likely rain. Time for Bug City? Because <laughs> of all the bugs that were there. Take this. Ugh. The way the soldiers are looking over the miners makes me think the miners are being forced to do, the, to do this by them. Okay, so, already went over there, so just this way now. Oh, let's take a look at that weapon we got. Cross Naginata. Oh, it's a spear. Takes 16 strength and 20 dex, and it causes blood loss buildup. Ooh. This might be something I can put the cold on and make it do both blood and cold. Yeah, 16 strength is totally attainable. I mean, I could two-hand that, but I could also just get three more strength. Weapon consisting of a three-pronged blade affixed to a long pole. The central, the long central blade closely resembles a katana. A weapon of the land of reeds known for its ability to be wielded as a spear while still being capable of performing slashing attacks. Hmm. Intrigued. Ah, 
Ah, this opens up the shortcut, which gets you to the grace, and then the boss is just right in there. Nice. So you don't have to go all the way through the place to get to the boss again. Magma Worm. Not sure if melee or ranged is the way to go. I really want to try freezing it as the thing. Let's boost fire damage negation. Switching the turtle out with that. Yeah, you really can't stay in that magma. It does lots of damage over time. Okay, I'm gonna try ranged. Ranged is definitely the way to go. Oh, yes. That really didn't do much damage, though. <laughs> I thought that was going to end the fight, but it didn't even do that. Moonveil. That sounds cool. And potentially an int weapon. Sounds very inty. Let's put another point into Vigor. And let's take a look at those weapons. Moonveil. It does take int. And it's a dex weapon. And it causes blood loss. <gasps> it's a katana. And it has its own special ability, Transient Moonlight. This sounds amazing. Katana Forge of Glintstone, Masterpiece of a Celian Swordsmith. Light enwreathes the blade when sheathed, explaining its Moonveil moniker. So it's unique skill, Transient Moonlight. Sheath blade, holding it at hip in a composed stance. Follow up with either a normal or a strong attack to draw the blade at great speed for an instant slash attack. Both attacks fire off a wave of light. That sounds so cool. I love that this place is called Rot View Balcony. Ah, what a lovely view. Yeah, my husband was just telling me how they were thinking that the rune arcs are... Well, when you use them, they're 
probably have the same effect as like an ember from Dark Souls 3, where it basically gives you its buff until you die, rather than being a timed thing that just wears out after a couple minutes or so. And yeah, I used one. I think they're right. We'll have to see how long, you know, see if it lasts, but I'm pretty sure that is how it works because I don't see any like shiny bits on me, like no particles coming off of me. That would suggest a temporary buff. And you can see in the top left of the screen, now there's the rings, the runes, the Elden ring kind of thing happening in the top left. I think it's going to just stay that way until you die. So I think it is basically an ember from Dark Souls 3. I think it's worth using more of them. Because right now it increases all of my stats by 5, which is so good. And I have 11 more. Yeah, let's test out these weapons. Normally I wouldn't be able to one-hand this, but because I have the buff from the rune thing, I can do it one-handed. So this is the cross... Naginata, was it? Yeah, Naginata. That's cool. Some of the attacks are like swipes back and forth, and then a couple of them are just like stabs. So yeah, it's kind of like a cross between a sword and a spear. That's the quick attack. Strong attack is a poke. And did it come with a special? Oh, just impaling thrust, I think. Yep, I'm going to try changing that out for a different Ash of War in just a second. This one has its own special Ash of War that I can't change. This is the Moon... Moon Veil. Oh, that's a beautiful blade. So ornate. Very fast attacks. Oh, hello! Ah. This is the strong attack. Big poke. Oh, right, it causes bleeding. I, I, right, both of these cause bleeding, actually. Uh, let's do the special. Right, so I hold it like that. And then, ah! <laughs> and then I use either light or strong. And it does a quick attack and this, like... This thing shoots out. Okay, so if I do that in a quick attack, it's kind of a horizontal arc. And if I do strong attack, it's just like straight forwards. Man, that looks so cool. Like the particles and everything that come off of it are just gorgeous. Come on, let's try that on, on more. Come out of the ground, my friends. Enjoy the rot view. a mushroom on them. It was probably growing on them. <laughs> I want to use both of these. I really want to use these weapons. Um, let's see what I can put on the cross Naginata. Try one of them. Spectral Lance. Oh! Oh, that's cool. How much damage does it do? It's a good place to test out damage because you have these slow-moving, weak enemies. But they have a lot of health. Oh, that's actually not very good. 77. A normal hit. Does 120. No, that's that's really terrible. Granted, it doesn't take much FP, but... I mean, if I'm going to do ranged stuff like that, I'd rather just use magic. That's an interesting one. I think it's called Storm Assault. Four hundred and twenty-five damage. That's a lot. It does take a lot of FP. I wonder how easy it is to interrupt. When I'm in the air, can I still be hit and will I fall down? Popped a bunch of souls to upgrade the weapons and ended up with much more runes than I thought. I can actually level up again. Um, 
Let's do Vicar again. Seeing as how recently I've been one-shotted by a couple bosses. Around Garank. Well, Garank was one of them. <laughs> Garank and the other one. Let's get my Vigor up. But, uh, yeah, I got the Moon Veil up to plus five, which is actually really high because it's a special weapon, so it uses the Somber Stones. So it scales... Um, it's kind of like the previous Dark Souls games where the special weapons take more to upgrade and they take a different type of stone and they don't upgrade as much. Whereas the cross Naginata is a normal weapon, so it, yeah, just uses normal stones and takes many more upgrades. So these, I would say, are roughly equivalent. This at plus 5 and this at plus 11 are about the same. Um, but yeah, I can't really use the cross Naginata unless I two-hand it, which I don't really want to do, so maybe I should get a bit of strength so I can use it. But the Moon Veil, I'm very interested in. How does it compare now to my cold Knight Rider flail? Keep in mind the flail's at plus 14, and the Naginata, or sorry, the Moon Veil is, well, probably lower than that in its equivalent. Significantly less physical. Significantly more magic. Actually, a lot more magic damage. Yeah, I think it's because the int scales C instead of D. And only causes blood loss buildup, so no frost, unfortunately. My flail is strike. This is slash slash pierce. Can I have both on me? Without being... Yeah, I'm not heavy, heavily loaded. I got rid of the parry on my shield, so I can just... Not worry about the shield. Let's try it out. Starting from the smoldering church, let's go down here to this minor herd tree. Oh, I'm so excited about new weapons! New weapons! Drawstring lightning grease. Ooh, lightning grease is new, I think. <laughs> Likely good sort. Are they? I can't talk to him. I have a hypothesis I want to check. That backstab did about 800 damage. I've always felt like the flail does horrible backstab damage. Fifty. So five hundred. Let me just test that again. Ah. It might do less damage if they're aware of me. Six forty. Hmm. It's not a huge difference, actually. It was more, but not massively more. Hmm. Huh. Critical is one hundred on both. Like I just wonder if different weapons or maybe different damage types do better crit damage. Or if it purely has to do with the critical number, and that's it. I 
I just love how fast it is to attack. Like, is it just me or is it really fast compared to the flail? Especially the first hit, like... I don't know. It feels faster, but maybe it's just... Because of the noise it makes. I don't know. <laughs> maybe it's my imagination. Cool looking. Oh, what is the range on that? And is all of the damage in that, like, light part that shoots out? And none of it's in the physical thing? If so, like, can I get them at the tip? Like, not touching my sword? Can I actually basically attack them past where the sword ends and get the same amount of damage? If that makes any sense. Hmm. We have a Scarlet Rot. Or Tree Avatar. Are you going to be more powerful or something? Putrid Avatar, yep. I think I went out of their range, so they had to pull back, and then for some reason they just kept pulling back, even when I went back in range. Green Burst Crystal Tear. Flame Shrouding Cracked Tear. I did it! Praise the skill! Well, I didn't need to use much skill to be honest. Necessary item ahead. Oh. That looks scary. Oh, we've seen those before. The giants, anyway. But what they're wielding, I don't know if we've seen that. Gigantic magic bow with magic arrows. We possibly actually did see that. I remember getting shot with arrows that I think were magical. Hmm. Here. Yeah, on the Limgrave Tower Bridge. Fear. <laughs> That's what I'm feeling looking at it. Underground ahead, yeah, six feet under. Oh, hey. Minor Urtree Catacombs. Oh, I wanted to look at those new tiers. We got Green Burst. Temporarily boosts stamina recovery speed and mixed physic. Hmm. Well, considering I have the talisman that does the same thing, this probably won't stack with it, I would assume. 
don't feel like that's too important. And the other one was... It was one of these. Enhances charged attacks, holy attacks, lightning, magic, and fire. Yeah, can't remember which one, but it was one of those. Boots a certain type of damage. Oh, there is an under. Look at that. Let's not go there just yet. Up, and then time for frost. Be wary of up. Is that Scarlet Rot that I was getting by touching that stuff? Gonna reach. Ah. Just does at the right moment. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's Scarlet Rod. Don't I have something against that? Wait, alleviate Scarlet Rod buildup and cures Rot. But that doesn't protect me against it, right? Just, just double check. No, it just gets rid of what you already have. Well, either of these. Actually, wait, no, this one does immunity. I don't know if that does Scarlet Rot. Higher immunity helps to mitigate the buildup of various poisons and Scarlet Rot. Okay. And yeah, those weird reddish, orangish bubbles are Scarlet Rot. Aeonian Butterfly. Have I discovered that before? Butterfly with withered scarlet wings found in the swamps of Aeonia. According to myth, these butterflies were once the wings of the goddess of Rot herself. I've probably read that before, but it's been a long time. Oh, hey, Krabby. Just a normal crab amongst all this Rot?
Be wary of up. Thank you. Let's try dropping down. Huge magic sink. I should probably just skip him. Armor ahead. Hey, they weren't lying. They said no decoy ahead. Don't think. They're right. Nothing but some cute little crabbies. Oh, I swear, it looks like they're coming for me, though. Are you... <laughs> Why? <laughs> I'm not gonna hurt you. Friendship ahead, time for grass. Yeah, nom nom. Little wolf imp head. Looks like it's made of stone. Probably very heavy. Yeah, weighs eight. Let's see what it looks like. <laughs> Silly, cute, but definitely not me. Oh, that's so weird. You can see that I don't have a head anymore. Like you can. <laughs> Like, can you see the... Wait, do I have a... Weird, sometimes it looks transparent and sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes it looks like my neck doesn't exist and other times I'm like, wait, it does? Huh. Head covering made from the largely unaltered head of an impish golem. Resembling a wolf, it holds trace amounts of lupine endurance. Aww. And now we've looped around. So instead of going up the ladder, let's go straight. There's a stake just right outside of the boss room, thankfully. Why is it always crowd? Be wary of group. Hmm. Take my flask of wondrous physic. Oh.
All right, we can handle just one. Mad Pumpkinhead Ashes. <laughs> what does it say about Mad Pumpkin Man Head? Spirit of a mad soldier with a large, brawny physique. Though he has stifled his panic within the dark confines of his helmet, he rampages as if driven mad when agitated by bloodshed or the humming of insects. This mad soldier is all that's left of a broken gladiator. You know, I saw the giant over there, but what I didn't see is that giant pot. I've never seen a pot so large. Can we talk with them? They're so big. <laughs> I mean, they're far bigger than the giant. Well, I think this is a pretty good place to end the episode. I hope you've enjoyed so far, and when I return, we'll explore more of Kaled.